Hello everyone and welcome to another video on JavaScript programming. Kaushal this side from Simply Code and today we are going to discuss DOM manipulation in JavaScript. This is the part 2 of previous topic where we discuss the basic window object present within JavaScript and also some DOM manipulation. So before we begin, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Code. So without any further delay, let's get started. In this video, we will start with some DOM manipulations and later on we will be taking a look at the document.getElementById method. By now, we have come a long way from where we begin. Now we know functions, we know classes, data types and almost every basic concept one needs to know while working on JavaScript. We know the functioning of document object model, right? We know that DOM is an API that helps JavaScript understand what is there written inside the HTML document. So DOM defines the whole HTML document in a hierarchical form to make it understandable for JavaScript so that other JavaScript functions can work over it, right? So by far we have a lot of theoretical information about the document object model in JavaScript. We also came across the window object present in JavaScript and we know about methods, right? But we never used JavaScript to manipulate DOM on any HTML documents. So today we are going to start the video with the DOM manipulation. So in this video we are going to add some functionality to our web page. This means that today we are working on a little bit of HTML as well. So let's move on to the programming part and we'll see how we can manipulate a basic design of a web page and we'll try to manipulate it with DOM. So adding functionality to a web page refers to doing tasks like we want to perform validations or having few text boxes for a phone number or account number. So let's say we want only numbers to be there inside these boxes or we don't want them blank or any other functionality we want to add. Then we can use JavaScript. So talking about HTML, let's do one thing here. We'll create a button with the help of button tag and we already have this heading with the h2 tag here, right? So we have this heading DOM manipulation part 2. So it is printed on our browser as well. Now what we'll do is we'll create a button. So let's create an empty button first. So what we have to do here is we have to write in this HTML document. We have to use the button tag and let's say the button name will be click here. Fine. So here we are. We have created a button, save it and here you can see we have a button named click here. Now talking about events, we have many events present in HTML. Like if we are clicking on this button, so this is an event. So if we click here for now, we can see nothing is happening over here. Similarly, we have many standard events present in HTML like click events, scrolling events. So if we want to change the focus from one text box to another or we are dragging some text or selecting something or double clicking on it as well. What if we target these particular events to perform specific actions with the help of JavaScript. So these events are basically the methods present within the window object. Just like the onClick method we have. We have the onClick method in window object, right? So we can use onClick method to perform some specific task here. So we'll see how we can use onClick method here. For example, let's say we want this button to perform a specific task when we click on it. Right now, if we click on this button, we can see nothing is happening over here. So let's say we want to show an alert message on clicking over this button. So the flow of this click will be like if we click here on this button then something in the JavaScript code has to register this activity and perform some specific task like a pop-up alert message or some sort of other messages. So we have been through the alert method present within the window object in the last video. So let's suppose we want a pop-up when the user clicks on this button. So what is going to happen is when we click over here where we want a pop-up on our screen with a message written over there. So let's say we want an alert with the message welcome to simply code, right? We can do it in JavaScript with the help of functions. We already know functions, right? So functions are statements we use to perform some specific task. We can call them anytime here. In this case, if we want to embed JavaScript within an HTML document, then what we have to do is we have to use a window object method or event we can say to call a function on clicking the button. 
so we have to use the on click event so let's try to do it what we'll do is we'll write here button and over here we'll write on click so here you can see we have other methods or we can say other events as well we have on can play we have on double click we have on scroll so we can use any of them so for now let's suppose we are using on click and we want to map it to the JavaScript document so we can do it with the help of functions so let's create a function first so what we'll do we'll go to the .js file and we'll create a function here so let's say we are creating a function named function let's say button and then we have the opening and closing round brackets and the body of the function so we want this function to return a pop-up with the message welcome to simply code right so we'll write here alert so I hope you guys are aware of this alert term because we have seen we have been through it in the last video so we'll write here alert welcome to simply code and we'll save it so if we call this function over here only so what we have to do is let's see if this function is working fine or not so we'll write a button and we'll call it so save it now and if we refresh this so here you can see we have a pop-up with the message welcome to simply code so this function is working totally fine we can use this function with the HTML document as well all we have to do is we have to write the function name after the on click event so we'll comment this statement here and we'll go back to our HTML file and we'll write the name of a function here. So our function name was button and here we have our function. So save it and here on the browser if we click on this button so we can see the output as a pop-up with the message welcome to simply code what it will do is it will automatically call the function when the user presses the button so this is how we can map events in JavaScript we'll do so many such things in upcoming videos like changing the style of text and the on mouse over effect we have in JavaScript we'll also go through it and we'll see many more such events in further videos so this is just an example of what is yet to come so let's move on and talk about the get element by ID method so let's say we don't want this pop-up on click what we want to do is we want to change this heading here so you can see here we have the heading as DOM manipulation part 2 we want to replace this text with something else on the button click so the function will remain the same what will change is will change the body of this function so instead of writing here alert what we'll do is we'll use the ID now so what we'll do first is we'll provide ID to this heading tag so let's say this heading tag has the ID named as heading so we have the ID heading for this head h2 tag so what we'll do here is we'll write here document so as you guys know document is also a method present within the window object right so we'll write here document dot get element by ID and we'll pass the ID we want to use so here in this particular case we want to use this ID heading so we'll pass heading over here so we'll copy it from here and we'll paste it here fine then we have the dot inner HTML property so here in this case we want to take a reference to the object h2 so we know h2 acts as an object in the document object model right so we can use it to take the reference of this object and also all the objects do have some properties right so the dot in a HTML here is the property of object h2 and it will hold the value written inside the h2 tag so the dot in a HTML property holds the value DOM manipulation part so what we want to do next is we want to change this text to something else right so if we want to write here something else so let's say we want to write here subscribe simply code fine so let's say this is the string we want to print here on clicking the button so we want to change this text to subscribe to simply code 
although if we save it now we don't see any change now that's because we want the text to change on button click so if we click on this button now here you can see the text is changed so similarly we can do a lot many things with this now for example we can store this value inside our own variable so what we have to do here is we have to write here where c is equal to and now this where c will hold the value returned by this statement next up what we'll do is we'll use the alert method and we'll see right here c so what it will do is it will take the value so where c will hold the value dom manipulation part 2 and next up this value will be printed on the pop up here so let's save it now and if we click here we can see here we have the pop up with message dom manipulation part 2 so we can use this dot in a html method to get the string present inside the h2 object and we can also use the alert method with this variable then so there are many more ways to access the elements the document dot get element by id method is just one of them we will go through other methods as well in the future videos so that's all for this video guys see you in the next one where we will go through dom and website layout in javascript so if you like this video do give it a thumbs up if you have any doubts do let us know in the comments share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe simply code thank you